Hi there, welcome to my small backyard garden. My name's Lena and I live in a cookie cutter home on a corner lot in Zone 8B on the west coast of Washington State. And as we enter the last week of October 2022, I'd like to share with you some of the beautiful flowers that I still have blooming for me this time of year. We're gonna start with this bed right behind me here. Uh, I dug up this bed earlier this spring, so everything um, that is growing in this bed is still fairly new in my garden. And this is where I grow a lot of my roses and my dahlias to kind of help extend the growing season a bit. Starting from the very front here, we have some purple sedum right next to um, this beautiful button flowers here. Uh, these are Coreopsis and it's a variety called Lil Bang Darling Clementine. Uh, they are very cheerful flowers and they look really great right next to this uh, bright yellow chrysanthemum. And of course, October and November time frame, this is the time for chrysanthemums to come out to play. And they've been shining brightly for me in this bed for about a month or so now. Really loving them. And down here, I've got some single flower dahlias of uh, pale yellow and red varieties. Um, they are uh, slowing down significantly now. Uh, they've been blooming for me since, you know, midsummer. Um, but back here, I have some beautiful uh, yellowish orange dahlias that are a pretty good size. Um, and they're putting out lots and lots of flowers for me to enjoy. Um, to be able to have these beautiful flowers like late in October and maybe well into November, I'm really thankful. And I love dahlias for this reason, for their fall blooming uh, characteristics. And in this bed, I have a couple of roses. I've got Golden Celebration, uh, Lady of Shalott, and, uh, which are pretty much done with their bloom cycles. Uh, but down here, I have uh, a beautiful creamy yellow rose called Molyneux, also from David Austin. Um, and it's giving me its last flowers right now. It's got a nice fragrance to, to it too, this rose. Uh, around here, I have another dahlia that is a pretty bright yellow uh, with red tips. Um, it, this is an informal dahlia that is pretty much uh, almost the size of my palm, big, uh, actually bigger than my palm. Uh, it's quite beautiful. So this bed is full of hot colors, as you might already notice, uh, things that are bright yellow, orange, and red. Um, I keep them in this bed um, that I just dug up uh, uh, earlier this spring. So everything here is pretty much uh, super young still. And this is another one that I dug up at the same time. And in here you see a lot of uh, cool colors like uh, pinks, uh, purples and blues and greens and some whites. Um, this corner uh, receives lots of shade, so I keep all of my shade plants in here like Impatience, Hostas, uh, Coleus, and um, this ground cover uh, is uh, Dead Nettles. And then I have a small shrub of Hebe going on back there. Um, everything in here just got planted like only a few months ago, um, and it's coming along nicely. Uh, towards the end, uh, the back of the bed, it receives more sun, so that's where I keep all my roses and my dahlias. Um, here I have a dinner plate variety uh, dahlia. Um, this one hasn't fully opened. Um, this one down here is on its way out. Um, this dahlia has a, a really lovely uh, magenta tone to their flowers, and it's huge. And right here I have another variety, but I lost the tag of this plant, so I, I'm not really sure what, what variety I bought, um, but it's this like really nice uh, white, like kind of a creamy white color with a really uh, subtle hint of um, soft peach in the center. Uh, quite beautiful. There's another one here. Love it. In here, I have a couple of pink roses. Uh, there's uh, Eustachia V, pretty much finished right now. And right here is the, um, the Ancient Mariner, also uh, done with the Bloom Cycle. Uh, here, I have Gabriel Oak, and this is its last flower of the season, I suspect. Look at that open form flower, bright pink shade that is really beautiful. 
sizable bloom, kind of like size of my palm. It's a beautiful rose, Gabriel Oak. And back here I have a rose of Sharon that I planted in the summer. And it's a beautiful pink shade that uh, kind of fades into purple uh, as the flower fades like this. It's quite nice. I see some yellow leaves on there. Hmm, it could be from underwatering. So we've had a pretty dry and warm fall, which is a bit unusual uh, for zone uh, 8B where I am. Um, but we're gonna get some. We're gonna start getting some rain here in a few days, and it's probably going to continue to rain. If you know this area, the Pacific Northwest, uh, West Coast, Washington, um, you know that it rains a lot in the winter, and that's what we're gonna get. Right here I have a rose in this container and this is Carding Mill. Carding Mill is such a gorgeous apricot rose um, with like bright yellow stamens in the center. It's really beautiful. It's um, This is its second or maybe even third flush uh, this season. And then it's gonna go to sleep for the winter. I have another container rose here. Uh, this is Roald Dahl. Roald Dahl is done too, except this last one. This last rose. Roald Dahl has a cup-shaped rose uh, that is kind of a like small to medium size. Um, but it's very healthy and when it when it's in full bloom, like it's just full of flowers. The entire, entire uh, shrub is full of flowers. Right here is my zinnia. And this is kind of like a chance encounter for me, honestly, because I don't remember planting it. I don't remember buying this plant, but I remember scattering some like mixed seeds in this area. And this could be one of the seeds that got scattered and it survived. Um, I love zinnias for their beautiful, bright flowers and they flower for a long time too. I wish there were perennial in my area. Okay, let's move on and let me show you this uh, climbing rose that I have. This is Strawberry Hill. Um, I haven't really done a good job of like staking the stems onto the trellis and I also have to buy more trellises too because that one trellis back there is not enough. This is a very vigorous grower. Believe it or not, I just bought this rose as a bare root um, earlier this spring and I think I planted it in either March or April. Uh, so it's only been ground, it's only been in the ground for six, seven months and look at how much growth it's put on. I can't count how many branches it's uh, shot up really. Very healthy and look at all those healthy looking leaves. I love, love, love this rose. Um, the bloom. So when it blooms, it tends to bloom in like small clusters like this one. Um, and it's got such a soft, delicate uh, pink tone to it. It's like true pink. It's really beautiful. It kind of reminds me of Harlow Carr. Um, in you know the shade of pink that it has um, but I think this one is just a tad brighter um, it's really gorgeous though I like it I might go out and buy more trellises later today and you know do a better job at tying up this rose when it first opens gorgeous Okay, let's move on over here. Uh, this is where not, not much is happening. Um, I just cut off uh, my sunflower heads uh, yesterday because it was getting really heavy and really droopy. Um, I grew sunflowers for the first time this season and I did that from seed. Um, I picked a variety called Skyscraper uh, because, you know, I thought, you know what, it's my first time, so let's go big or go home, right? And oh my goodness, Skyscraper sunflowers are huge. Like, check out this flower head, guys. This thing can easily measure up to like 12 to even 13, 14 inches across. Um, I left this out here uh, since yesterday and I think um, some animals came and, you know, have a have a have a go at it 
um, got them some food. I'm probably going to save some seeds for myself for next year and um, leave the rest to the birds and some other animals. But I grew two stalks back here and uh, my fence back there, uh, that's a six foot tall fence. And um, this thing was growing like much taller than my fence. Um, it was probably like 10, 11 feet easy. Uh, check out that maple tree you guys that's like a free backdrop that I have for my garden it's not my tree It's growing outside of my fence and it's being taken care of by my neighbors who have done such a good job taking care of the tree and I love looking at that fiery red uh, shade um, in the fall so October November is such a beautiful month for me here um, in my garden and I love it not much else is happening except maybe this one rose. This is Bosco Bell. Um, it doesn't look much right now because that flower is on its way out. But I see quite a few flower buds on here that I hope will open before first frost hits. Uh, which shouldn't be for another month or two. Uh, right here I have my red hibiscus in a container. Uh, which I will bring inside uh, to overwinter. I have done that for three years now. Um, and my red hibiscus has been with me for, this is its uh, third or maybe even fourth growing season. Um, it's gorgeous. Right now it's about three or maybe four feet tall and three feet wide. Alrighty, let's move on to uh, the other uh, section. Um, right here, uh, not too many blooms. Um, we're gonna walk by my blood good Japanese maple, uh, which is a really beautiful, graceful specimen. I planted this two seasons ago, and when I bought it, it was a five, six foot tall plant, and right now it is standing at about 11, 12 feet. A bit of a slow grower, uh, but I love it for its graceful uh, shape and beautiful leaves. But this is the tree that I would like to show you. This is Phantom Hydrangea or Hydrangea paniculata in a tree form. Uh, this is its uh, third growing season in my yard. And I, um, I did some underplanting around it. Um, I've got some wallflowers, some dusty millers, and some more pink chrysanthemum. Uh, this tree uh, does really well. Uh, among other plants in the same bed so it's a good team player and in the summertime these uh, what do you call these like these little petals uh, they're really like creamy white really beautiful creamy white shade um, and right around like late August September um, they will start changing color and right now it is a beautiful shade of pink like this so it has a really nice uh, you know like fall uh, display. Um, let me walk um, towards my patio because I want to show you my camellias in containers. I I'm really looking forward to uh, watching my camellias bloom. Um, this is a, a camellia japonica a variety called uh, Mrs. Tingley, and I see lots and lots and lots of flower buds on her. It's a very healthy plant. I keep all of my camellias in containers because. Um, I want to be able to see them in the winter and I don't really have a part sun part shade condition to grow them in the ground so they stay in containers on my patio. This is another one, uh, a Camellia japonica. Uh, this is a variety called debutante. Debutante is such, has such beautiful flowers, it's really out of this world gorgeous. I love, I love the flowers of debutante so much. So these two are pink camellias, and then I have over here, um, this one is a red variety called Tom Knudsen. And Tom Knudsen flowers like right around January, February time frame. Um, these guys are in containers as well. This is a tricolor camellia. Uh, this plant got uh, freeze burned pretty badly last year from uh, the winter storm that we had, but it kind of recovered. You know, it put on some some new growth. Um, not a whole lot, but um, it's surviving. And um, I don't see new buds. Oh, oh, there are some here. So a few new buds appearing. 
Uh, this one, this one is the newest member of the family. It's the littlest one. This is Shishi Kashira, and it's the only Camellia Sasanqua that I have. And this one is going to bloom uh, the first. So it blooms right around like late November, December time frame. Shishi Kashira. I see lots of buds on here too. Woo, I'm so happy. So even though the growing season is like, you know, coming to an end here soon, um, I'm a little sad, but because of my camellias, I have some things to look forward to. All right. Uh, let's come to this section here because I have a, a, a shrub rose that I'd like to show you that is still blooming for me. Um, this is the direct view from out of my kitchen window and right here I see a large, I have a large shrub rose called Le Petit Prince. And Le Petit Prince is a like pink lavender rose. Um, and um, I say it's large because my fence back there is uh, six feet and this rose, uh, you know, this is only its second year in the ground and it is as tall as my fence uh, or sometimes maybe even taller, you know, now that I'm really actually looking at it. Um, the size of the blooms is pretty uh, impressive as well. It's like the size of my palm, you know, and it makes such good cut flowers because of the uh, long stems and uh, you know strong and sur sturdy stems uh, It lasts a while in a vase too. I love this rose quite a lot uh, It looks like little jewels in my garden really when I look out at it from afar And it is growing strong for me still this late October uh, Lots of buds that are you know going to open here soon Love this rose um, I've got some uh, Japanese dappled willow tree forms right here. I've got two right here. Uh, the tri-color effect on my Japanese dappled willow uh, slows down significantly in the summer and fall. Like You hardly see any pinks or salmons on the tips anymore, but in the spring, it's wow. It's really a sight. Uh, it's been a warm fall, so my coleus is still surviving and thriving. Um, this is one of those plants that people grow for their uh, interesting foliage, very attractive. But as soon as temperature drops in, like you know, into the 40s, um, they're not going to survive. And temperature is about to drop here in a week or so. And well, let me show you this one. This is K. Paris Magnolia tree uh, that I planted about almost three years ago. It's about two and a half years, I think, in the ground. And it is giving me one last flower. This tree flowers all season long from like May to like late October where we are now and sometimes well into November and when the flower fully opens which this one hasn't yet uh, when it fully opens like it's quite large it's quite impressive and pollinators love the flowers um, especially the bees back here I have three uh, containers of roses uh, but this rose on the right is just still going strong and uh, it is Princess Alexandra of Kent beautiful pink flowers it's literally seven feet tall right now and it looks like it's climbing up my window even though it's not a climber it's a shrub rose uh, let me show you a flower real quick nice pink flower that's quite large it smells amazing. I love this rose for um, how many times and how many flowers it gives me uh, per season. Very vigorous grower. Okay, I think um, I think that's all the blooms that I've got. It's a it's a sh short tour. <laughs> short or not i feel like i babble a lot but anyway thanks for watching you guys i hope um, you have some beautiful blooms in your garden as well right now and uh, we'll see you in our next video look at my look at my dogs just hanging out <laughs> chipper you are so funny you are so cute and funny